Healing is just as much a part of what Jesus died to produce as forgiveness of sins. Jesus came to heal your body. God wants you well. Jesus wants you well. So the word save in the Bible doesn't only mean forgiveness of sins, but that same word is referring to healing, and it refers to healing multiple times. Again, in this footnote, it's got all of these times that the word was referring to being made whole. Matter of fact, in Mark chapter 5, where this woman was healed of the issue of blood, let me just turn over and read some of that to you. In Mark chapter 5, in verse 28, she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Let me drop on down to verse 33. It says, But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Twice in that verse right there in verse 34 when it talks about being whole, that's the Greek word sozo, that your faith has sozoed you. Your faith has saved you. Your faith has made you whole. And in this instance, it is very obvious that it's not talking about that your sins have just been forgiven, but your physical body was healed. It's only religious people that have broke salvation up into these parts to where Salvation refers to forgiveness of sins, but then anything else God does, prosperity, deliverance, healing, these are separate things. These are add-on. These are additional. They are optional. But no, that's not what the Bible teaches. Healing is a part of your atonement. Jesus has healed you just as much as He has forgiven your sins. Man, that is a radical statement. And some people say, well, I, I can't believe you said that because there's people that are still sick. Well, let me ask you this. Are there Christians who are forgiven and are saved and they still sin? Well, yes, you can be sick and be a Christian. You can sin and be a Christian. But that doesn't mean that God hasn't forgiven that sin. That doesn't mean that God hadn't provided you with the power to be able to overcome sin. Just because you aren't living a sinless life doesn't mean that God hasn't forgiven you of your sins and given you the power to overcome it. Likewise, just because Christians are sick does not mean that Jesus hasn't already healed them. Matter of fact, let me read this passage to you and I'll... Man, there's just so much on this. It's hard to get it into little 30-minute segments. But over in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 24, it says, talking about Jesus, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Notice that this verse puts forgiveness of sins. It says who bear our sins in His own body on the tree. So He bore our sins. It's talking about the forgiveness of our sins. And in the same verse, it says, by whose stripes ye were healed. And of course, this is going back to Isaiah chapter 53. And let me just read these verses to you. In Isaiah chapter 53, Man, I hate to cut out any of this. It's awesome, but let me just start with verse 3. It says, He is despised and rejected of man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Boy, this is so important. Jesus didn't die for himself. Jesus didn't have to atone for his own sins. He was sinless. Everything that Jesus did, He did for us. Michael was born in 2003, a healthy baby, but right after probably the first month or two, we started seeing rashes. By the time he was a year old, we had gotten him diagnosed. He was allergic to gluten, eggs, dairy, nuts, 
He couldn't sleep more than an hour or two at a time. One of us would sleep with him and just soothe him. He'd wake up every hour and a half, just just get this, this expression on his face, like, you know, just miserable. Then the asthma started when he was about two or three years old. One time um, we went to Breckenridge. He started having an asthma attack. He was gasping for air and literally arching his back. And I thought he was gonna die in my arms. I remember sitting there just feeling so helpless. And you could tell he had fear. Today, Michael is a teenager who sings on stage as an actor, plays sports with his friends, and eats whatever food he wants, things that just years ago could have killed him. This story is about how one family from Colorado Springs learned to walk out his healing, even when the symptoms said otherwise. This is the healing journey of Michael Schatz. Though the Schatzes were Christians, they had no idea of their authority in Christ or that God wanted Michael well. And for years, his condition remained the same. By the time Michael was five, he was well-trained in what he could and couldn't do. I've got three brothers and we had a huge backyard and they'd all go outside, they'd start running. And I'd run with them, we'd play tag, we'd swing, we'd do everything. And then the asthma would kick in. We always had to be real careful about what we brought into the house or what we were eating around him, because even just opening the, the peanut butter jar could, could possibly cause some sort of reaction, and so you always had to watch what you are doing. If I cooked spaghetti, the steam from that would get into his lungs and make him wheeze. We saw ourselves going to the ER twice a year. We had gone to the doctor and he told him, this is something that he's never gonna grow out of. This is something you're gonna to have to learn to deal with the rest of your life. He never left the house without his backpack. It had his inhaler in it and food. And he knew as a little guy that he wasn't allowed to eat anything outside of what was in his backpack. That's the thing when it comes to food allergies. If you can just live with it, they just do. So now Michael is about six years old. The whole family got the swine flu. My husband and I were like asking each other, what did you do to make God so mad at you? <laughs> you know, like, like something is wrong. So we prayed together for what I think is the first time in our marriage. And the two of us just prayed and said, God, what are we missing? Our closest friends, Colin and April Carr, they were graduates of Karis Bible College, and they gave us a huge stack of Andrew Womack tapes. And just, we went to breakfast with them and they slid it across the table and just said, here. We graduated from Karis in 2008, and we just started taking Andrew's teachings. We would buy them by the, by the bulk. We sensed an openness with them that if we gave it to them, they would listen. And so we loaded them up with a, a solid, you know, 50 or 60 different CDs. When we started listening to these teachings, starting with Spirit, Soul, and Body, and it was things that we had never heard of before, never thought of before. It says that you have the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And that's not out there in heaven available to you if you could just reach out and somehow or another pull it down. No, it's in you. And I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and started speaking in tongues. This quit being just a book. The church that I was raised in literally kicked people out for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and for speaking in tongues. Basically, a lot of them came against us and said, don't listen to this. And we're like, but there's so much life in this. And so I basically would read scripture with the goal of proving Andrew wrong and ended up proving him right in my own heart, in my own mind. Mary Catherine took the approach of listening to the point where it was completely annoying. <laughs> I would listen to Andrew as I did laundry, as I would clean toilets, as I'm feeding the kids. I couldn't get enough of it because it was like I was eating spiritually for the first time in my life. I also saw all the healing testimonies. I would watch video after video about how did they pray? How does this work? Scott's healing testimony really spoke to me because Andrew didn't pray for him. His sister prayed for him. If this person got healed, then my son can be healed of asthma and food allergies. Inspired by Andrew's teachings and healing journeys, Kevin and Mary Catherine spent months studying God's Word 
and realized that the baptism of the Holy Spirit was an integral part of seeing their son healed. At this moment, a neighbor invited them to a healing night. They invited us to a healing night. And so we took Michael and the whole family over. We took Michael up and he got prayed for. All of us basically got baptized in the Holy Spirit that night too. We went home and with the approach of, well, Michael, either the word is true or it's not. Either by Jesus' stripes, you are healed or you're not. You're healed now. So here's some pizza. For the first time, I actually touched it and pulled out my own piece and like looked at it, like everything that's on it, like all the cheese was like sticky and like, I'd only see that on movies like until then. And he ate a whole piece and enjoyed every bite of it. And um, I don't know if it was 20 minutes or an hour later, heaven brings Michael into me and he's covered from head to toe in hives and he can't breathe. I had to take my thoughts captive because the thought crossed my mind that I just killed my son. In the old days, we would have called 911 and got him to the hospital, but I had the most supernatural peace. For the first time, I said, hives, get off my son in the name of Jesus. We asked him, we're like, do you want to take a shower? Not that a shower is going to take hives away because <laughs> it's coming from the inside out, but we're like, maybe it'll just help soothe him. Mary Catherine says, Kevin, go get your guitar. And he played, by his wounds we are healed, and he was singing it over him. And I got my Bible as Michael's in the shower, and I was I just started reading scriptures over him, Isaiah 53 and 1 Peter 2, 24. And, I watched the hives disappear from that boy's body. The next morning, I said, Michael, either the word is true or it's not. You want some pancakes? Now I make homemade pancakes. I use flour and eggs and milk, everything that he was allergic to. And he ate them up and enjoyed every bite of it. After breakfast, he's playing in the living room with his brothers. Mary Catherine came downstairs. He's laying on fetal position. I ran upstairs and called the Andrew Womack prayer line. I'm like, I'm new at this and I don't know how to do this, but I know he's healed. And I just wanted the whole story about Michael. But the man that answered the phone said, well, either the word is true or it's not. And he said, just so you know, I was healed of severe asthma. I had it for 18 years and I've been totally set free. And so this man prayed the most beautiful prayer and that he is blessed to eat everything and then he's free to eat everything. He is healed. And I went back downstairs and Michael was up playing the Wii again. From that moment forward, Kevin and Mary Catherine were determined to believe God's word regardless of what their eyes saw. Following the peace of the Holy Spirit, they helped Michael walk out his healing one meal at a time. One day, Michael would eat a yogurt, and he was fine. The very next day, the same type of yogurt, he would eat it, and his mouth would start rashing out and getting itchy. And I'm like, no, in the name of Jesus, get off him. It was bit by bit, and we really had to ease into it, just because it was everything against I'd ever been taught. It just took a few months till Michael was completely free of all symptoms, where he could eat anything he wanted to. <laughs> and um, just walk in that healing. Michael could eat whatever he wanted without having any symptoms, and his lungs were so healthy that he made the soccer team. For now, it appeared that the battle was over. Knowing that Michael would need to have a spiritual foundation of his own, Mary Catherine began taking him to the Karis Bible College Healing School, where he became one of our youngest prayer ministers. This training would come in handy when, at one particular soccer practice, the enemy would try and see if Michael would stand his ground. Michael loves soccer, and I dropped him off. He told me this later. He goes, Mom, I got so wheezy during that practice that I couldn't even speak over myself. It got so bad where I couldn't, I couldn't get a full sentence out to be like, asthma leave in the name of Jesus. And he's like, I couldn't even speak because I couldn't talk because I was couldn't breathe. So I just started humming or singing, your praise will ever be on my lips, a worship song that we had on in the house all the time. One word at a time, your 
praise while running. And then before I knew it, it was gone. I, I don't even remember it leaving because it was, it became so natural. But he comes home after practice and tells me what happened. He's like, mom, I got so wheezy, I couldn't even speak over my body. So I started humming and wor a worship song. Your praise will ever be on my lips. Wow. As he was running suicides <laughs> and he's like, it left. And he had another great practice. You know, this is so good for people to hear because they, they just want somebody to pray for them and then boom, they're healed. But not very many people will fight for healing. And if you are going to be consistently well, you have to learn how to fight like this. While the Schutzes firmly believe that what God did for their son, he will do for anyone, they realize that without the leading of the Holy Spirit, their actions could have had fatal results. They encourage others to seek the healer first, rather than the healing. Our journey was stepping out in faith, and stepping out in faith for us was, here, Michael, this is the food that you're allergic to. You have to make decisions based on, on the peace in your heart, and that's where we were. Jesus says, I am your peace, like he is our peace, and it is so real. It was night and day from when we would see him under attack of an asthma attack or something and call 911 versus getting the word of God in our hearts and going, oh, we have authority over that. I look at him eating pancakes, homemade pancakes, or a pizza, a slice of pizza with everything he used to be allergic to, and I just praise God. We were in bondage and now we're in freedom. Our lives have been completely changed. Now it's normal for me and my brothers to go and play soccer with friends. I didn't think that that would become normal for me ever. Today, the Schutz family is involved in our Karis Theater Productions, where, as actors, they share the same message of hope that set them free. Joining Michael on stage is Tim McDermott, who had also been healed as a child when his parents stood their ground against autism as Tim effortlessly commands the stage and Michael sings at the top of his lungs, we are reminded that with God, all things are possible. To our friends and partners, we say thank you for helping us share this message around the world. I have the partners to thank for me being completely set free of all these crazy food allergies, life-threatening asthma. I get to minister to other people about what Jesus did for me. And it's all thanks to these partners of Andrew. Andrew Womack Ministries offices have been established in 19 different nations with over 70 Karis Bible Colleges around the world. In 2008, the ministry came to Heidelberg, Western Cape, South Africa with the first Bible College. In 2017, a second Bible College was opened in Cape Town and a third Bible College followed shortly in 2020 in Johannesburg. This year, we have over 720 students, including pastors, between our on-campus and distance learning options. Between dispatch, prayer, and our African French department, we interact with over 4,500 people per month. We air Andrew's Gospel Truth and Story series on TBN, TBN Yetu, Faith TV, Daystar, and our multiple social media platforms. You are looking for a good return on your investment. I believe that this is a good ministry. It'll touch you right where you are. And I encourage you to become a partner with us today and help us put the gospel out all around the world. My medical problem started in 2001 when my thyroid completely shut down. I was diagnosed with Sjogren's Syndrome, which is an autoimmune disorder, which means your body doesn't know what's good and what's bad. So it attacks the good stuff as well as the bad stuff. So in essence, it is killing you. I had been prayed over. I had prayed over myself. And, and when I spoke, nothing happened. So I had kind of given up on healing for myself. So I got to school and in October of that first year, I got really sick. I was home sick one day listening to a CD of Andrew's and he said, the reason believers don't get healed is because their physical body is more real to them 
than their spirit man. And if they'll just get to the point where their spirit man is superior to your physical senses, then what's true in the spiritual must come true in the natural. That started my journey, that one statement. And over the course of the next six months, every single instructor had a hand in that somewhere, whether it was Barry with Revelation or Dwayne Sheriff with the Spirit versus Flesh or Greg Moore on the gifts of the uh, gifts of the Spirit, Wendell on the Holy Spirit. There wasn't one person. It was the combination of, of all of them. It was like there was an explosion on the inside of me. And I just very calmly began to say, Sjogren's Syndrome, you get out of my body. Lupus, you get out of my body. Carpal tunnel, you be healed in Jesus' name. Back, you be healed in Jesus' name. And I, it was so calm, it was like surreal. And I just knew that it was done. I haven't taken my medication ever since that day. And I am so thankful that I didn't get healed when somebody prayed for me. I am so thankful that I got it through the Word. And I have realized that I'm not the only one. I hadn't had a menstrual cycle my whole life. The doctor said it wasn't going to be possible. Um, coming here to Karis, through God's Word, I was able to receive it, and now I can have children. I had a lactose intolerance for 20 years, and after sitting under the Word at Karis Bible College, I was completely healed from my intolerance. I was diagnosed with an abnormal heartbeat and a lung disease, and when I came to Karis Bible College and sitting under the Word, I'm totally healed now. The school made the difference, and I think anyone that comes with a determined attitude to get what Jesus provided for them with open ears and an open heart to receive what he has for them. Everybody can receive what I received. Are you wanting to enjoy a life transforming experience and discover the purpose God has for your life, but don't have the time to attend Bible college on a full-time or part-time basis? Caris can now come to your front door. Caris offers correspondence, e caris and Caris online distance learning options that you can enjoy from your home. Relax, study at your own pace or in a group setting and see your life transformed. Visit awmsa.net or give us a call on plus 27 to begin your life transforming journey. Thanks to the friends and partners of Andrew Womack Ministries, we have equipped countless individuals to overcome life-threatening attacks of the enemy. But what if the individual is already a seasoned minister who sees miracles and healings on a regular basis? Does that make them immune to such battles? Recently, Greg Moore, the director of Karis Bible College Colorado, found himself in a similar situation, fighting for his life while celebrating his wedding anniversary in Florida. He really turned white. He got real hot. He was shaking uncontrollably. He said he could hardly walk. And so we went to the ER and thought that I had food poisoning. But they ran tests, they ran several tests, did a CAT scan and found that I had pneumonia. They also said I had sepsis. A real sweet young nurse came to me and she got nose to nose to me and she said, ma'am, you do not understand how serious your husband is. We had people all over the world praying for us and you know, I was in and out. So it was, this was not a time when I, I was really, I really felt strong. Greg's daughter, Michelle, called Dan and Winters, the director of Karis Jacksonville, and asked him if he could pray for her mom and dad. Dan and immediately grabbed two friends and drove an hour and a half to Greg's hospital, where they joined Janice in prayer. And Janice said when they walked in, it was like she saw Jesus walk in the room. I heard Jesus speak to me in my heart, and he said, wherever two or three are gathered together, in my name, there I am in the midst of them to carry out what they agree together on. We began to look at the monitors and they began to go normal. I started improving pretty dramatically. So the next day is when the doctor came in and he said, you're not even the same person. What happened to you? 
Just two days later, Greg was released from the hospital and returned home to Colorado with his wife and good friends, Paul and Patsy Milligan. Today, doctors cannot find a single trace of sepsis in his entire body. So I just want to, want to encourage people, just because you preach and teach the Word, uh, that doesn't mean you won't ever face opposition, but hey, we've got a wonderful Savior and a wonderful healer, and healing is, always belongs to you. Hi, my name is Annalie Nakawa. I'm the director for Andrew Womack Ministry South Africa. And with me, I have my husband, Isaac Akawa, who is the African Regional Director. Well, thank you for tuning into the program tonight. And I hope that you have been blessed in you discovering that it is God's will for you to be well. Now, we just want to encourage you through this time to dive more into the Word and really be strengthened that even in the midst of all that might be going through, that you will always remember that God wants you well. Now, Andrew has resources on the topic of God wants you well in the form of a study guide, book, DVDs, and CDs. So please, we will encourage you to make yourselves available for these products. They will be a great blessing to you. Now, for all our free materials as well, you can visit us on awmsa.net for all of Andrew's free materials. The ministry has offices with Keres Bible Colleges in three locations here in Africa, Zimbabwe, Uganda, and South Africa. If you are unable to study at any of these locations, we also have distance learning available in the form of correspondence or e -carries. For more information regarding our e package, please visit our website awmsa.net forward slash e -carries. We are very pleased to announce that we have launched an African French department. To call for prayer or find out more about Andrew's French resources, please give us a call or message us on our WhatsApp number plus 27760459729 or send us an email at africa.fr at awmcaris.com. We would like to take a moment just to say thank you to our partners for your partnership because without you none of this would have been possible. Not only are you co-laboring with this ministry, but you're also co-laboring with the Lord into getting this message out into Africa as well as the rest of the world. Thank you for tuning in tonight. We will see you next week, same time.